Hi everyone, Jordan Early again from Tribal Habits. I'm joined by our CEO and founder, David King. How are you today, Dave? Uh, Jordan, I've just had a haircut, so I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. It's my first one after lockdown from uh, coronavirus. The quarantine cut. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Dave, today I want to talk about whether or not organisations actually need an LMS. I think there's uh, an assumption with a lot of organisations when it comes time to do online training, they immediately jump to an LMS, a learning management system, is something that they need. And for some organisations, it makes sense, but I think a lot of the time that can be a bit of a misstep. So I've got seven questions here. We're going to do seven questions in seven minutes again. Um, that I think organisations should be asking themselves when they go to buy a, an LMS. Uh, so I'll run them past you and you, you can give me your thoughts. If you think we've missed anything, feel free to jump in with, with anything else. Cool. Um, but yeah, let's get started with the first one, which I think is the big one of you have an LMS or you're thinking about buying an LMS, where are you going to get your content from? Yeah, I think you've, you've probably nailed the most important question up front. So learning management system, I think the, the key is in the title to learning management system. So they're basically empty vessels and they're delivery platforms which manage users but not content. At least they don't create content. And so if you buy an LMS, you immediately have to say to yourself, where's our content going to come from that's going to go in this LMS? Because it's probably not in the LMS and I probably can't create it in the LMS. So I've got to have the ability to go out and either create it myself using e-learning authoring tools and then upload into the LMS or I have to find an LMS that has some, I guess, built-in libraries which probably won't appear in my branding so I may need to have the ability to white label or rebrand stuff or find external libraries. But you're right, it doesn't actually solve the usual problem, which is starting all of this. The reason you're looking for a learning management system is to provide training, provide content, provide knowledge, provide solutions. And an LMS is just a delivery mechanism. It's like, a, it's like having Netflix with no shows, right? You need to think about where's your content. Yeah, Netflix with no shows doesn't sound great. But. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next thing I want to talk about is LMS is a really an enterprise solution, or they might make sense for enterprise organisations. Um, and they're very, they're a big solution to implement within an organisation. And I think it's worth people who are thinking about an LMS going through that process of what is it going to take to get this beast into our organisation? Yeah, look, it's probably worth unpacking as we go here, um, our LMSs enterprise only. And probably at the end, I'll, I'll suspect that they're not, but they largely are. Um, but you're right in that a lot of LMSs have implementation costs. Uh, and sometimes that's monetary. Um, the learning management system provider wants to recoup some cost up front. LMSs tend to be quite commoditized these days. And so there is risk that you move your LMSs around a fair bit. And so the providers want to get upfront money from you and they get that in setup fees so that they get some sort of lifetime value or client from you, even if you leave after a couple of years. And then there's the effort uh, of setting them up. They're, they're usually not particularly user friendly. And that really doubles down if you don't have a dedicated training team who can handle that, which again is probably, that's fine in enterprise team, enterprise organizations with big training teams can chuck resources at it. But in medium organizations or smaller, where the HR team's running this, the implementation process and effort is pretty high on them. Absolutely. And I think this next point kind of dovetails off that. And it's around what the solution can do, what an LMS can do. There's a lot of complexity in there and it's capable of a lot of things, um, which may be a lot more than what someone needs the system to do. So you might actually be paying for things that you don't need. Yeah. And actually, and, and in return, if we go back to point one, not getting things that you do. So, in small and medium organizations, and for medium, I'm thinking well up into um, like a thousand users. So the vast majority of organizations, what you need is content. That's what you're lacking. Probably what you don't need is the ability for your LMS to have 20 different brands or um, to cover a thousand different uh, team uh, and management stuff or to have a massive API that you can plug in your systems to. You don't need all of that, but you're paying for it. Enterprise needs that because they've now reached a problem of complexity in administration and an LMS may ease that complexity. And the, but they've also got the resources to build all their own content. So, you know, they're going to pay for the, 
the admin help and they're not so worried about the, comp the content. But for most organizations, the problem's the other way around. They can manage the admin if they don't have the content. So yeah, an LMS is often just far too complex in what it excels at, which is management. Yeah, for sure. So the next thing I want to talk about, we've touched on it a little bit already, is this concept of, of cost and more specifically total cost of ownership. I think with SaaS products, it's really easy to read the subscription rate. It's 10 bucks a month or it's this many, this much per user. Um, but a lot of time, there's more costs that come after that. So maybe with an LMS, can you run us through some of the things that people should look out for in terms of what's coming six months or a year down the track? Yeah, look, two, two, I mean, putting aside the cost of figuring out where you're going to get your content from, which is often a hidden cost, you subscribe to the LMS and then you're like, we have no content. And so suddenly you've got to go and either pay people to build content for you externally, which is horrendously expensive. Um, you know, a lot of estimates are five to 10,000 US dollars per hour of online learning you want created, which just crushes most organizations. Uh, or you've got to now subscribe to their library, which you didn't realize. And it's not even branded or white labeled, which is more costs. Putting all that aside, LMSs can have two costs you need to watch out for. Because they're largely enterprise products, they assume users are logging in pretty much all the time. And so they tend to operate on a stored user model, which means you pay for every single user you have in the portal, whether they're logging in or not. For small to medium organizations, which may have more irregular, more seasonal usage, that's a really bad model because you're just paying for usage that's not happening. You need an active user model, which often doesn't happen in an LMS. So suddenly your costs are much higher with an, with an LMS. Next, storage issues. So a lot of LMSs have a storage cost and you don't realize what problem that's gonna be until you get in there and suddenly, you know, you're uploading a few videos to be displayed and you're getting hit with storage costs. And they can actually be quite significant. And if you talk to a lot of enterprise level organizations, that storage fee becomes their number one problem. And it's kind of a stupid fee because it kind of disengages you from using the platform, which you don't want. You want to go all in, right? So you want an active user model and limited storage to, to really eliminate those costs and, and optimize your budget. Great. And the other thing I, I want people to think about, I think is worth considering is where is your focus with this platform? Is it about yeah. delivering engaging learning or is it about administrating things? And I think LMS plays into a certain area there. Is there any insight you've got around Yeah, you're, that? Dead, you're dead right. Um, and I guess we've spoken about it a few times that it's a learning management system. It's designed for training administrators. So if that's you, you're going to love the system. And if your primary problem is the amount of administration you've got to, done, you've got to get done, if that's the bottleneck, if you're like, we just can't get training out because we've got so much to do, like thousands of enrollments in, in dozens of locations across hundreds of topics, then maybe that's the problem you need to solve and maybe an LMS is that solution. But for most organizations, that's not the problem. The bottleneck is not there. The bottleneck is lack of content. Uh, it's that it takes too long to implement. So yeah. it's everything else. And in learning management systems, not focused typically on end users, it's focused on training administrators. So I think identifying in your business case what your goal is, what you're attempting to do. If it is to run induction training, improve the skills of your employees, uh, get in more engaged with them, uh, reduce errors, improve efficiency. Well, none of that's got anything to do with training administration. It's got everything to do with user experience and content. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds a little bit like we've been on an LMS beat up here for the last <laughs> five years. Um, Fair, yeah. They are useful solutions for a lot of organisations. So let's talk about who uh, an LMS might work for. What's an ideal yeah. organisation? Look, enterprise, absolutely. Uh, if you're running a lot of face-to-face -face training, if that's your primary delivery method, then an LMS can be great for that as well because they can have quite sophisticated tools around calendar management and room management. And that's great for them because they don't have to host any content when it's face-to-face, -face, right? They're just hosting data and kind of and locations. So anything where you don't have to worry about content and LMS excels because they're great at user management. Yeah, so... If, you, if that's your delivery mechanism, great. If you've got a big learning team and you are punching out lots of e-learning yourself in traditional formats like SCORM, then an LMS can be great because they're very good at hosting that sort of externally generated content. Yeah. So if you're using 
may be really specialized training with simulations or branching pathways and you've got a specialist e-learning designer, then yeah, you're going to want an LMS to kind, of, to kind of manage that. But outside of that, then you probably don't want an LMS because you're not doing the things an LMS does well. Yeah. But I, I'd happily concede, yeah, for those other reasons, in those areas, an LMS suits. Problem is, in my opinion, that's kind of like 5% of organisations. And that's why I think there's been this breaking down of barriers and the development of other platforms in response to the demand from the other 95% of organisations. Absolutely, which leads into my final question wonderfully, Dave. What other options are there out there for organisations who aren't enterprise but need to deliver training, need to deliver learning experiences to their staff? What can they look at? Yeah, I've kind of seen this term digital learning platforms now becoming more prevalent because there's a whole range of different things out there. So you could be looking for a learning record store, which is a more modern version of an LMS, just purely focused on storing learning records from a variety of different platforms. Maybe that's what you need. And then you're going to hook in a bunch of different platforms around that and use your learning record store as your central repository of just training records. And the platforms you plug into that could be a learning creation platform like us, like Tribal Habits, which really excels at the the creation of training and also does all the LMS stuff as well and is a learning record store. So it's a good all-in-one platform for most organisations. But maybe you need a dedicated learning creation platform. Maybe you need a learning experience platform, something like LinkedIn Learning, uh, where you actually can't create any content or host any content. You just get access to their library of content. And there's other specialist learning experience platforms out there in particular industries. So in the tech area, you can get learning experience platforms that just drill into everything about coding and development. And they just provide you with a ton of ready-made content. Can't create your own, can't do anything outside that. But if that's all your organization needs, maybe that's the solution for you. Excellent. So I think, I think just not immediately typing into your browser learning management system, maybe typing in digital learning platform or learning creation platform or learning experience platform can help kind of open up different avenues for you to go down and solve the problem your organization's actually facing. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably a good uh, future video for us to do is to go into each of these different types of platforms, Agreed. what they do well, what they don't do, how they all kind of hang together and give people a good understanding of what, what the ecosystem is out there for learning platforms. Agreed, let's do that. Absolutely. Well, that's all we've got time for today. The clock has been ticking away. Uh, Dave, thank you again for your time. No worries, Jordan. Thank you very much. No problems. And guys, if any of this is resonating with you, be sure to check out tribalhabits.com. Um, we've got a lot more information there and we can help you on your journey to online learning as well. Thank you very much and goodbye. See you next time.